Hey guys, today we have a 2009 Land Rover Range Rover. If you can see that, we're gonna be replacing an alternator. We have the alternator here. It's somewhere in this side. All right, let's get started. Okay, so to tackle this project, this alternator, I believe we need to remove this side here. So this coolant reservoir need to be away. We're gonna move this out. Um, this passenger side headlight need to be removed. Get a couple of screws. I think before that, it need to be removed with this grill here. Oh, my grill is busted. I can fix that all right so let's get started so first we need to remove the grill you have one two three bolts here looks like the ten or eight right now I'm, I'm only have one in the middle these two tabs are broken so I'm gonna plastic weld that one but let's go ahead and remove that so once we remove that underneath here there will be Need to lift that up right here in the middle lift up and pull out and you have this sensor um sensor here don't forget to remove that one and that should come out all right that thing's out so let's put that in the side and then we're gonna go ahead and remove this headlight it looks like it's been removed before so you can see right here missing some bolts here so that's a phillip phillip screw we should move that and one in the bottom here okay so once we remove those screws bolts this will come out and on the back side there's just one connector here. So we just pinch that one and should come pull out pretty easy. There you go. It's one connector. So this one will put this inside. So we don't damage it more. The next I'm gonna go ahead and um, unscrew this for the coolant reservoir. So we got more room. You might have need to um, disconnect this here. So we're gonna lose some of this stuff. Okay, before I remove this reservoir, I open this up, the bleeder. So the, um, the coolant here will go down. Same thing with this, you open this up. So there's a stuck coolant here pressured so when you remove these it's not a lot of coolant to come out there you go that is out and this one we still have something to catch it so we can um drain the whole thing and we can probably reuse it so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna disconnect this where's my light i'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this sensor for the coolant. Press that. Then pull it. Or switch pull out. Just click that. That's out. And then take all these two bolts. I think that's eight as well. For this um the coolant it's um reservoir itself. And then later on we're gonna drain this. Once to remove those two bolts, size eight. This could lift up. There's a slot there. See that? You can see. I might not need to remove these. So I'm just gonna put it in the side here. That should be okay. Look like plenty of room for me to remove the alternator. But so you see that it's draining right now <laughs> because I tilted. 
so I'm just gonna open this up the coolant is coming back up from this hole if you can plug it it'd be better so you can tilt it inside okay so from here to remove these bracket so go ahead um remove this sense um this sensor here it's a clip put that in the side and then there's a bolt underneath here that's eight millimeter i got that out so you have to use a small ratchet for that and then on this side there's a eight millimeter you can fit a, a ratchet you gotta put this adjustable sock um wrench and sometimes this side has it too this one doesn't have it so once you get that out it should be able to slide up i don't think you need to fully remove that one on the side because see, this one here on the side probably don't need to fully remove it but if you have to go ahead and do it so you can remove this bracket all right so that is out i didn't have to fully remove the one on the side bolt you just have to plug it just a little bit just on this side here it's twisted but that side doesn't have a bolt so put that on the side and if you can see it that one that bolt there i didn't have to remove it you can easier for you and it's supposed to have another bolt there so it looks like someone worked on it before so the alternator is about there now it's almost there so the alternator would have a couple bolts as well but before we remove the bolts we're gonna find where's the um the tensioner for that belt i think it's on the other side on the driver's side so we're gonna access this we might need to remove this cover all right so this one is 10 millimeter and we're gonna open the um, the cover cap for the oil that should come up we need to slide it out okay so i lied there's two more this is um not back here so i had to remove this 13 bolt um 13 millimeter nut here and this should slide up and be able to at least lift up just that bit you don't have to fully remove it there you go so we have some room here and then we're gonna get so we can get this out all right so this will be sliding out now just be gentle i'm not <laughs> but you're supposed to remove that whole top cover top arm um, for the cabin filter but I'm not I'm lazy but once you get it out we can focus on this side okay that is out finally put it inside this is what I like to do put the nut back so we won't lose it so you can see this one doesn't have it broken tabs here and this to not for the um, from here put it back so we can access here so we can see what's going on okay so that's open i'm gonna go ahead and remove this intake so we can have more room here to have leverage this one just pop out there we go and Eight millimeter here and this one here and that should come out okay this one is not eight it's actually a seven so here we go sideways it will come out and this one should come out too be careful because this is brittle you might break it that one is pretty much loose there so just come out. there you go that's out i'm gonna put it in the side all right now we have more room here. All right, the tensioner is right here. As you can see, that's the tensioner. I think I can see. It. Oh yeah. See, 
that's the tension over there. We're gonna put like a half inch, a three quarters size square. So we can like pull it clockwise, I mean counterclockwise, so there's a tension. All right, so we got a three eight drives. We have a three eight extension. So we can put it there so we can lose the tension for that tension. Let me show you what we have here. So that's what we have. It goes to the tensioner, it goes straight there. And we're just gonna take this counterclockwise and see if it moves. There you go. Yeah, that's gonna be loose. So once you do that, then we're gonna remove the, um, the belt on this side. We're gonna pull this counterclockwise and then the belt will come loose here. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it to counterclockwise. Just notice, start using it. And I will be able to remove this. Okay. Move the boat out. There you go. That one is out. So now we can remove the um, the bolts for the um, that alternator. So to remove the alternator, there's the one on top. That bolt is size 13. And when you go underneath, let's see. There's two more down here. And the size 30 as well. They're pretty easy to access. As you can see right there. So remove those three, two in the bottom and one on top, and they should come loose. And then when they're loose, you're gonna disconnect the connectors. The um, positive ones. Right, so we're gonna remove the um, two bolts from the bottom. Now I'm trying to get the um, one on top. So this is almost out, so what I'm gonna do is this one here. That's the connector. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that on the back. Alright, so I got the connector out. This one actually brittle, so it broke. I think there's a tab in the bottom. I think it broke. So now what we're gonna do is to remove this alternator out this side. I don't think it's gonna go out underneath.
office. So I got it out. There we go. That's the alternator we have. As many say, we had to remove these inlet for the coolant for the radiator and I didn't want to um, bleed these or leak some more coolant I've noticed that this is very flexible mine is not brittle so I managed to turn it here and as long you be careful with the sharp edges you don't cut these wires here and secure that and don't cut all these hoses here and you should be fine and I got it out. As you can see, this one is really bad. It burned the um, alternator positive terminal right here. And we're gonna match it with our other alternator. Looks pretty identical. Yeah. So, a um, bit different, but I think it's gonna work. But the um, as long as the the mounting bolts are the same. It yeah, should be fit. This one is Denso. Look like the old one is Bosch. Is Alright, so now we're gonna install this back. Oh well before that we're gonna take care of the um the wiring the stuff we have. Alright, so before we put the alternator back, um I'm gonna order this positive wire that goes to from alternator to starter it's hidden there and also I have to replace the positive wire that goes to starter to before the battery I think there's a splice before the battery I need to be replaced and as you can see these are frayed um, they need to be replaced but for now I'm just gonna temporarily fix it with um, electrical tape and this one I'm gonna make a temporary connector here I'm gonna clean this up so on one day I'm gonna once the part came I'm gonna replace it but right now I'm gonna fix it temporarily just to get the car started all right so this one I try to clean it not thoroughly so with a wire brush a couple of wire brush and cut some of the the end so it'll be even and I'm gonna use this put it to the end of it crimp it and this is the same size that it could go here okay. and then wrap it with an electric tape all right so this is my temporary solution I do not recommend this because this is not waterproof and it's not replace the OEM specs so for now I'm gonna put a electrical tape here so that's what it look like now and same thing as the one who has frayed here this one put like three four cup um, turn on it and whatever you see there's an open wire temporarily I'm gonna put the electrical tape until I order this wire I believe there's a part number hanging on the top so we're gonna figure it out later so right now that's what we have I'm gonna go ahead and put the alternator back and install it and but before that okay we use this lot because it's stuck there and it's kind of like rolled on it so I'm gonna find a nut that goes in here to the new one so I found um I'm gonna put a washer too, a copper washer, and I found a nut that will go in there. Hopefully, I won't, I won't lose it. So, it's good there. I'm gonna put the new alternator back in. Alright, let's go ahead and install this um, alternator. As you can see, we did not remove these um, this coolant holes here, this neck here. This flexible here, so we gotta be quick. We're just gonna bend this and make sure you have the top bolt for this alternator so you will be able to locate it right away. So I'm just gonna pull this up. Make sure you don't bend this so it won't crack. So this is gonna go in like this, it'll be a little bit quick. 
see the arm might be in the way, but we'll see how this thing gonna go in. So once down there, and then once you pass that one, I'm gonna pull this up. See. So the bottom needs to go down. There you go. That should be it. That's it, guys. That's in. So once we're in, she's gonna manage it to drop it. Okay. There you go. That's pretty much in. So we're just gonna turn it where the pulley is facing towards the floor of the car. And that's it. And then we're gonna put the whole part on the top side. I'm gonna face it up like that so I can connect this three pin connector there. Make sure the tab is facing up. I think what happened here, whoever put the alternator before, the tab was, was flipped the other way and that's why it caused the burn on the big wire. Because the tab is broken, I have to Order the new part for this wire. However, right now we're just gonna install it like that. Put up electrical tape as well. Alright, so we got it up in there, the top bolt is just hanging there, it's not tight yet, so we'll be able to move this, so when we bolt the two bottom bolts, and um, as you can see, that's the um, positive that we have, which reaches there, so I'm going to get the bolt and the nut, you can see in the washer, right here. I'm going to go ahead and install that. The uh, ball is still loose. I'm getting a washer and let me see. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And it's still hanging there. Once I tighten them, and I might put another like electrical tape here to put some heat shield there because that's a little bit exposed and then we're gonna go bolt bolt on the two bolts in the bottom all right so we got the alternator in all we gotta do is put the dot on so i'll put more electrical tape here temporarily 
I know you're gonna make fun of me, but that's just temporary right now. So there's not a lot of exposed positive terminal there. Same thing as the um, disconnector here. So the belt goes the same. We're gonna get the tension on the driver's side and pull it, then put the belt back in. Okay, so the, the belt is back in. Just make sure everything is straight, right on the groove, all the way from the alternator to the other side. The AZ compressor is connected too, so make sure everything is straight. And then that's pretty much it for that. And then now we're gonna put everything back, the bracket, and for this um, the coolant reservoir, and we're gonna put the headlights and the grill. And we're gonna go ahead and test it. Alright guys, so we already installed the headlights back as well as everything here and everything connected properly and I actually put um, my volt meter here so you can see the battery is 11, about 12 volts and let's go ahead start the car and see what it looks like and if we're still having the battery light on this. There you guys, as you can see, there's no more light, no more battery light on it. I do have engine light, but we're gonna be fixing that later on. And let's check the, the voltage that we have. There you go guys, we have about 13.494 volts. So, alternator is good. About 14 volts, that's pretty good. All right guys, so thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and help you out um, what's going on with your car, if it's alternator um, related. And with this car, we're gonna be working on a bunch of these. So keep an eye on this car. So this is a for 2009 Land Rover Range Rover with a 4.2 liter supercharged V8 and just check out my playlist for Range Rover Land Rover we're gonna be working on suspension on this um, lower control arm upper control arm stabilizer and a lot more so please stay tuned guys and don't forget to like and subscribe till next time